That was good. Great. All right, folks. Well, welcome. This is episode 13 of Ask Evelyn, where we answer your questions about garbage, recycling, compost, and other trashy topics. I'm Becca Fong, and I'm the Residential Solid Waste Outreach Program Manager for Seattle Public Utilities, and I'm joined with... Hi, everyone. My name is Pat Kaufman. I'm the Commercial Recycling and Composting Program Manager for Seattle Public Utilities, helping out businesses do all their recycling and composting across the city. So happy to be here. Thanks. I know. It's good to see you, Pat. Yeah, good to be here. Happy Wednesday. I can't believe we're on episode 13. Oh, my. Yeah, look at that. I know, right? Started in April. Here we are in July. Yeah. All right. Well, folks, we've got a really good show for you this week. And a quick reminder that this show is run on your questions. So if you have questions, send them to us. You can either put them in the comments on this show and we'll try to get to them. You can also send them to us through our social media feeds. We're on Facebook and Twitter, of course, and as well as Instagram. You can also send them to the askevelyn at seattle.gov email box. So we actually have a question from that mail, that email box today, which is fantastic. So, right. um, let's see. So to start off with that, we are going to get into our first question. So Pat, take it away. Sure. So our first question uh, is, is about a uh, packing material. Uh, Dear Evelyn, is the Renew Liner branded insulated shipping material recyclable? It indicates it is, but I'm wondering if it would be akin to plastic bags, which are no longer accepted in the Re Seattle Recycling Program. The information on the material indicates the fill material in the packing is recycled PET staple fiber, and the film is 100% PET. Any guidance is appreciated. Well, that's a lot of, that's from Brian. Thank you, Brian. That's, yeah, thanks, that's Brian. Like, thank you, Brian, for filling in all the blanks for us, all the, you know, various elements to this question. Um, it is an interesting product. We had to look it up. I mean, I don't, I don't order a lot of uh, cold or keep cold product, which is, I think, what the material does. Let me just show viewers a picture using another piece of technology, another phone. Um, so this is a pack. Uh, a, a pack material that would come in a cardboard box, as you can see from the picture. And okay. you can see the labeling on it. I'm sorry, I'm not getting that focused, but. That's okay. I, I think yeah. we can see that it's got like chasing arrows. It's right. got the number one on it. I mean, you would look at this and then read the description that Brian sent us and be like, this is a slam dunk, right? It's made out of number one PET, which we've talked about a lot being a super valuable product. And it's got, I mean, it just looks like. Yeah. You know, we should be able to put this in the recycling cart, right? It is. It, it, it's just typical of manufacturers of these, you know, uh, materials and products that are well-intentioned um, and actually doing some cool stuff in that they're closing the loop. They're actually using, uh, you know, maybe, maybe not. This is just PET, so it's not necessarily recycled content. But what's great, some companies will take a uh, recycled commodity and use it to create their packaging and then promote that it's recycled content. And you'll see that labeling sometimes. Or like in this case, you see that this is a, the chasing arrows and the number one and P. Right. You know, images and icons that were, we commonly see on materials we commonly recycle. So, uh, but this is a curveball. This material is not accepted in our curbside program. It does not meet our guidelines. Um, we accept rigid plastic number one, we don't really go by the numbers, but number one being one of the plastics that come in a rigid pla plastic packaging form. And so we would, we would accept a tub, a bottle, a little carton container, something that's rigid plastic that is that same chasing arrow, number one. But because this is a squishy foam material and it's packing product, it doesn't fit our guidelines. We don't, we don't accept this. Um, the plastic is the same as what you would find in a, in a carryout plastic bag, PET bags, the most common plastic for, um, well, not the most common, but a common plastic for carryout bags or plastic bag product that comes around products and packaging. Um, but that labeling is a curveball because it's just, it's so suggestive. Um, we checked with a local foam material uh, recycler a company called Styro Recycle, who's located in South Seattle or south of Seattle, actually, in another city. Um, and they really target the number six uh, expanded polystyrene material. And so they don't really want this kind of foam either. So really this product, I will have to say it goes in the garbage um, or it's reusable, you know, one. Right. They we're gonna send a breakable item or an insulated item to a to a friend or family member, then one could save it. You could probably use it like you've done before. You you put uh, 
uh, uh, insulated. I put, them, I put them all together to make like a little outdoor picnic yeah. bench seat or like kneeling. My, like I've used it for, as a kneeling, that, that reusable seat I've used as a kneeling pad in the garden. We're remember so, our previous shows where we talked about reuse of such things. So it's a very durable substrate. I mean, that foam yeah. seat that we saw in the photo uh, and what Brian's asking about, it's really strong and durable. Totally reusable yeah. as a something you would kneel on if you're working on a project down the concrete or something like that so yeah i would recommend give it some reuse but eventually you know it's not going to fit into any of our recycling programs it is garbage in our in our system totally and i think that what's really hard is that one it's got all of those labels and the trappings and information that says this is you know made out of a plastic that you know you guys have all heard from us is very recyclable but before even the product that it's made out of a lot of it is um making sure that it's in the right shape that can be sorted at the material recovery facility which you guys often think of as like the recycling plant but that's where everything gets sorted and so i know that when we've asked before of uh, the folks that operate the murf things like that that are flat mm -hmm. the way that the process works they'll get sorted in with the paper because they're flat and they're squishy. So before they even get to the optical sorters that can choose out the different types of plastic, they'll get sorted before that. And then they'll end up being a contaminant in that paper, which yeah. we certainly don't want. Yeah, so. light and you know, it'll be fun to, to show some video sometime in the show of like how these sheet materials with these, these camshafts of different like little arms and wheels kind of bump the flat stuff along onto a different conveyor belt. So this would go with cardboard and paper. It would not go with the plastic anyway. So Absolutely. containers fall through these, these different arms and things. And um, the bags, of course, get hung up and everything and tied around. So we don't want plastic bags. But so, yeah, this product, um, you know, it's really, it's a bummer because it's a fully recyclable material, much like many right. things around us in the world. If you, right. you know, a shipload of it, you could find a market for it. But right. Uh, it doesn't fit our collection and sorting process, even though it's a material that's recycled, recyclable, it just doesn't fit our system. And it's about market share too, Becca. It's like, if, if uh, you know, everybody in the neighborhood was getting boxes with this every single day, then we would see it in our um, waste audits, our, our waste sorts we do of the garbage stream. If it became a higher percentage of material in the garbage stream, then we might pivot to the recycler and say, what can we sure. try and make it fit the MRF? Is there is there a way, you know, at a certain cost, would it be worth it for this right. to explore that? But because it's just so rarely, you know, it's not commonly yeah. found really, um, it's not gonna, it's not making it in the program anytime soon, I don't think. Right. And I think um, speaking to kind of the large volume, like you think about styrofoam block, we pick that up through the special item collection right. for free, which gets recycled to Stero Recycle, who mm -hmm. you would follow it up with to see if they would take this material. It would have to be a really large amount of material. Yeah. So, That's I mean, good point. it's, it's, it's got to be, it's got to be a large amount. There's got to be a viable market. That's right. So. All right. Well, Brian, that's an awesome question. Oh, that's great. Right. And I think that, you know, good due diligence to make sure you're not contaminating the recycling stream. Right. Definitely. That's a perfect example of a question to send to us through Ask Evelyn. Absolutely. So unfortunately, Renew Liner, not recyclable in your cart. Um, Please yeah. reuse it if you can. Um, it actually made me think we have an Ask Evelyn Pinterest board as well that I might attach the video of the Third and Republic Murph, sure. which would be really cool. The Third and Lander Murph that's run by Republic Services yep. that all of our residential material goes to. Right. It'll be really cool for you guys to check it out and to see all those machines and the camshafts that uh, Pat's talking about because it's it really is about the order of operations and the material and having a market. It's It's complicated, but pretty cool. And I think any of you who are watching Ask Evelyn are going to be into that. So we'll make sure that that gets up on our Pinterest board. I'll do that probably later this week. Right. So, Good call. All right. So question two. This is one that comes up a lot. Yeah. And we've got this one this week. And it's really straight into the point. Dear Evelyn, is my dog's hair okay to compost? I brush him every day and he sheds a lot. I got that in all caps. Thanks. <laughs> As a really good question because um, – People always want to know about pet hair, mm -hmm. human hair, mm -hmm. um, you know, it, it's, it's natural, like it should be able to break down. And unfortunately, the answer is no, we cannot accept that in our compost stream. And there's a couple of reasons. And, you know, Pat, I'm going to hand it over to you in a second. But I know for what we often tell folks is that it's, you know, it's just not a valuable, high valuable commodity to put into the compost mix, right? It's just yeah. not something that... Want. Yeah. They really want food waste. They want yard waste. 
they want to prove compostable material. That is what allows them to kind of take the, they're making a perfect recipe to make that compost and to get that biological activity to really break things down. And hair and fur is just not really part of the mix there. Right. Um, but Pat, you've worked a lot with the organics processors too, and you brought up some really good points when we were talking about this. Well, yeah, I mean, it's, it, it's a health department concern. You know, it's, it's a, it, any kind of human waste, animal waste, and I'm not talking about, you know, waste like uh, poop, but I'm talking about, you know, fur. And, and as was mentioned uh, when we were talking about this was, you know, the rendering of material, like in the slaughter of animals, like before something becomes food, it's an, it's an animal at one extreme, and then it's food at the other. Right. And in that in-between zone, none of that material, none of the, you know, guts or fur or hides or hooves or, you know, any of the stuff that's related to the animals that are processed for food, none of that stuff is supposed to go in the compost system. Those go to the right. green plants, and those are, that's a totally different system. And so from the consumer side, from what SPU provides as a service to their customers, we are not permitted to accept any of these materials only food. Now, sure, it's a chicken bone and it's a chicken, but it's a portion of, you know, it's, it's food that's been, um, it's animal material that has been processed to be food for consumers. So it's, been, okay. it's been, you know, clean to a degree and processed to a degree where the health department has considered these issues and they, they accept that. So the facility that processes the material is permitted to accept food waste. So fur, kind of back to the basic question, like what's a little dog hair? Well, if we start saying yes to dog hair, then why not people hair? And then you've got all, it just, it's too much and it's not what the facilities are made for. And like you said, it's not a value add element to the process. Right. It's not readily gonna break down. It's not gonna add some wonderful nutrient rich element to the finished compost. It may not even break down, I don't know. Um, we didn't really ask the processors those. Yeah. Um, but yeah. They, like, no, we don't want that. Yeah, that's it. <laughs> the end of the conversation. They said, no, we don't want yeah. that. That's it. Um, so, yeah, it's, I think that people, um, you know, it's a reoccurring material. They're resource conscious, you know, and they're like, sure. wow, this is really something that I could easily divert and put into this. Right. Gave me the thumbs up. But no permits are out there for processors, yeah. and it's just a no-go. It's a no-go. It did make me think, you know, I have a cat, and so I put, like, flea treatments on her. And, you know, I'm thinking, like, if I was to somehow try to compost her fur, like, we've had in the past with organics processing all kinds of different chemicals that are persistent mm. that stick around that do not break down in the composting process. And as I was giving her her flea treatment for the month, I was thinking, like, that definitely has some kind of residue. That's how it, that's how it, it works, right? It right. gets all over her fur, and then the fleas, she's uninhabitable because she has this yeah. pesticide on her. Right. So, I mean, that's another thing to think about. I think about with human hair, like there's dyes and chemicals and all those things right. that persist as well. So we did, you know, when we, we talked to different colleagues, you know, someone was like, what about felting with cat hair? And I'm <laughs> like, I am a super crafty person. If that's your jam, have at it. Yeah. Like, if you can figure out a way to reuse it, great. Um, one other thing that might be a little bit close to that is um, – Oftentimes I'll be brushing my hair and I'll take like the little wads of hair out of my hairbrush right. and I'll put them outside near my bird feeder and the birds will carry them away. That's, so. that's a handy little reuse for a, or a bundleable <laughs> material. Um, you know, if that's what you want to have with your I know. pet. For, it's not for everybody. <laughs> I also would mention that, you know, uh, there's a fair amount of hair that goes down the drain and, you know, you really yeah. pull that out of your, your, your drain uh, screens and dispose of it in the garbage. I mean, it, you know, fur, oh, yeah. fur and hair should go in the garbage. It should not go down the drain. Yeah, absolutely. That's a really good point. Yeah. All right. Well, thanks for that question. Always a good one. It's always a good thing to think about because it, it is one of those things that feels kind of like our, our first question, too, is it feels like, man, it, yeah. this seems like something that really could go in the compost right. or the recycling. Like, it seems like it meets most of those qualifications, but unfortunately it doesn't. So thanks again for that great question. And this is the type of question we get in Ask Evelyn. That's what Ask Evelyn is about, okay. right? I mean, it's, uh, it's not, you know, is that aluminum can recycle? We don't get that question. We get these good right. questions that we can talk exactly. about. Exactly, which is good. Get into it. Yeah, it's great. Yeah, it's nice for all of you who are watching to figure out kind of how the systems work. I mean, it's, it's great to answer these questions for you for the individual items, but we just hope that you can learn a little bit and share that knowledge with folks. And then as you get another item that might, fit into that same category, you are equipped to understand why or why not a material might be accepted. Mm -hmm. All right, so we're gonna to move to our part of the part of our show, which is the weekly waste challenge. Okay. 
So we pick a new tip or trick every week to try out and report to report back on how we did, because, you know, it's hard to change things. You know, we're all in the business of, you know, changing behaviors and even for, you know, accomplished waste nerds like Pat and myself, it's like, it's always good to try new things and see how we do. So, you know, it's never too late to earn, to, to learn some new practices. So last week, our uh, weekly waste challenge was to look at some water conservation tips on savingwater.org. A lot of you who are watching who are Seattle Public Utilities customers probably got our water quality report last week. Mm -hmm. And, you know, it's really great. We are super lucky in the Northwest, Pat. You and I were talking about this. We are, you know, super fortunate that we do have a lot of water. Mm -hmm. We don't experience drought. I grew up in an area that had drought when I was a kid. Mm -hmm. um, and we don't experience that here. Right. But our summers are incredibly dry. You know, right now is probably not a great example. It's a little gray where I am. Um, it's not the 5th of July yet, so it's not going to be sunny. <laughs> and But you always want to think about conserving water, right? It's always just a really good practice. Why waste something that you can use later, essentially? So, um, so Pat and I each kind of went on to savingwater.org, and we looked at a couple of tips that we could do for water conservation. And, Pat, you had a really good one that I think some folks don't necessarily think about. Right. It's something we do every year. We have a... a put in an irrigation system here and so the water sprinklers that automatically pop up and spray the yard so each year you just when you turn it on in the spring you just have to make sure all your sprinklers are going in the right direction you know going towards the plants you want maybe even adjust as the plant grows and gets more established it needs less water really so you can crank down on the nozzle make a little less water spray out um, you can also just adjust the time on the timer of the of the uh, control clock that's another way. Some people have just real simple ones. You just plug into your hose bib and it has a timer on it. So just cranking down. You were mentioning like, you know, there's people who have like moved into a house and uh, there was a system there already. So they, it wasn't their doing, but right. to kind of either have someone come in and take a look at it um, to make sure that it's right. You can uh, usually save some water there. You don't have to leave the time as high as it is or have as much water right. out. A lot of plants need water as when they're young and being, you know, uh, installed in your landscaping. But as they become established, they need less water. So just to kind of keep an eye on that, that was a thought for spring. Yeah, I think it's a good thing. I think that, you know, just kind of watching how the water mm -hmm. needs change over the years as your plants get established and then definitely over the seasons. I think that's super important. And there were two things that I wanted to talk about from savingwater.org. This happened before this week, but I wanted to talk about, um, we have a really great program for low flow toilets. Oh, and yeah. I had a super old toilet in my bathroom <laughs> and Seattle Public Utilities has a rebate program for low flow toilets. I went to McClendon Hardware and they had a whole list on the website, um, the savingwater.org website for lists of toilets that qualified. Yeah. So I was like, great, this is awesome. So I went down there and McClendon's was like, absolutely. Here's all the toilets you can choose from. I got one, I sent him my rebate form and I got hundred dollars back and I got a really great working toilet. And I definitely did notice that my water use went down, cool. which was fantastic. So I got money, I got a new toilet and my water use went down. So it saved me money. So I was like, this is great. So if any of you haven't done that and you are a Seattle public utilities customer, check that out. That's definitely worth it. Yeah. A lot of the, one that, a lot of the places, big box stores and plumbers, they're very aware of the list of accepted uh, toilets. And there's a lot of them on that list. There are. There's a lot. I mean, it's going to fit in with your bathroom mm -hmm. well. There's lots of options to choose yeah. from, which is great. And you get 100 bucks, and then you save money long term. It's fantastic. Um, the one tip that I did do this week, so we've got a garden here. And, you know, being home with my kids, I was like, they need some chores. Uh -huh. And so their chore became watering the garden, which means they got to drag the hose from the hose, but pretty far. So they are invested in knowing exactly how often they have to water because it's a lot of work for them. And so what I taught them was the trick was actually to put your finger into the soil and test how far down the soil moisture is. For them, my kids are little, to let them know like plants don't need water through their leaves, right? Where they really need their water is in the mm -hmm. roots, right? And they need them not at the surface level, but down below. And even I am, I fall prey to this because I'll look outside and they're like, we watered and I look out and it looks really dry. I'm like, did you really water? I think plants might need a little bit more. So they learn yeah. to kind of put their finger down and check you know, and they're like, if I was like, if it's wet down to okay. this point, you're good. You don't oh. have to water. Mm -hmm. And we have gone from watering once a day to watering every other day to maybe even every two days, depending on if it's sure. rained, which has been fantastic. Mm -hmm. And let me tell you, my kids are really excited because they don't have to drag the hoses as far. And our garden's looking really good. You know, stuff's growing a little bit more, kind of what you're talking about, sure. Pat. They don't need quite as much. Yeah. Um, 
but that's a super easy tip that has already started saving us water. And sprinklers, are, are, sprinklers are fine. I was talking about sprinklers, but soaker hoses, part, a couple of the zones we have in our yeah. are just soaker hoses because that's sufficient just to get a little moisture down at the root zone. That's all you really need. The foliage does not need to be wide or, you know, it's just getting right. to the base of the plant. So, you know, that's good. It's a good reminder. It's a good reminder. I think it blew my kids' mind. They were like, what? Leaves don't need water? I'm like, no, that's not how it works. But we kind of all have to remember that because you all have pictures of sprinklers watering overhead. Yeah. So, so for this week's waste challenge, we are, since it's July 1st, right. we are kind of kicking off Plastic Free July. And so last year, there's actually an organization and a campaign that's called PlasticFreeJuly.com. We would encourage you guys to check that out. And so we're going to be bringing you weekly waste challenges that have that are kind of along this theme for the month. Mm -hmm. So for this week's challenge, we are going to swap out a plastic item for a reusable item. And Pat, right. you brought up a really good point, like with what's coming up this weekend. Well, yeah, 4th of July, right? We have all these picnics and these, uh, you know, um, party oriented meals, um, a celebratory gathering. Not that necessarily there's going to be a lot of those gatherings with with the restrictions and the guidelines that are in place right now for our communities. But, you know, folks will still get together and even, you know, families and folks will just be in that party mode and they might want to get, right. they might be out picnicking or hiking or going camping or something. So, so it's just to try and focus on replacing one or two items in what you would normally do. Like, go ahead and use your durables. Just grab, grab that grouping of forks that's in your uh, silverware drawer and take those with you. Just re reusables right. don't go to the store and buy a little box of plastic forks you don't need to do that you can use the real ones and and eliminate one more single use item totally and i think you know i know the guidelines are if you are getting together for socially distanced barbecues they encourage people to bring their own service wear so right. it's a great time to grab the forks out of your drawer because you're only going to need enough for you and your family and friends so that's kind of perfect right whoever's coming coming to the party within your own little bubble right. so I think we talked about one other really interesting thing, which is also plastic coated stuff. Oh. So kind of being in picnic yeah. mode, right? We talked about that last week, even with compostable plates that have that plastic coating. Yeah. It's like, this is a really good chance to kind of see what we can swap out, you know? And it's, it's all about little changes, you know? And we're just certainly not against like all plastics, like they have their uses, Oh yeah. but let's see if we can practice using a little bit less. Yeah, I'm a, I'm a full on recycler, but I'm not a, um, I'm, well, whatever, you know, I'm not an anti-plastic person, I think. <laughs> Definitely. It's everywhere. You know, you're not going to be able to avoid it. Um, I'm not trying to remove plastic completely from our lives. I'm just saying single use plastics, things that right. not need to be a one and done throwaway item. Those are the things I'm more right. into eliminating and also just managing your plastic uh, waste a little better. But so yeah, plastic totally. and paperboard. That's, that's the thing we're, we were talking about. You're right. Um, the plates, um, cups, things, things that you know, plastic is not the thing you think of when you look at the product, but it's plastic coated. So it keeps it right. you know, guideline wise, it, it eliminates it from being accepted in the compost program. So right. single use is really what we're after here. We're really asking folks, the challenge I think is more eliminate a single use plastic item, you know? All right. Well, I mean, I think we both do a pretty good job with that already, but I think that there's definitely something that we can try out right. for this week. And so we'll, we will tell you how we did and what we decided to target um, for this week's waste challenge when we see you next week. Right. Um, all right. So thank you guys. Episode 13. Thank you for hanging in there with us. Yeah. It's always great to see folks joining us. Thank you for those of you who came in the comments. Um, it's great to see you guys scroll by. So thank you so much for tuning in. We will be back next week, Wednesdays at 1130. Right. And, you know, please send us your questions. Again, you can send them in the comments. You can send them in to us at Facebook, at Twitter. You can also send them to askevelyn at seattle.gov. And spread the word. Tell one friend about us. And hopefully we'll see more folks tuning in. It's always great. Um, and I think that's that's our episode for today. So I'm Becca Fong, and remember, life's better with less stuff. Yeah, and I'm Pat Goffman. Remember to recycle right. All right. Take care, guys. Enjoy your long weekend, and we will see you next Wednesday. Thanks. Happy 4th, everyone. Bye-bye. Happy 4th.